Hello again, everybody. This is Pastor Tony. Welcome to lesson number 16 of the third series in our Healing 101 course. This series is entitled Simply Finished with an exclamation point on the end because this is a finished work and your healing is a finished work as well. Now let's go back over to scriptures we left off with yesterday toward the end or in the last lesson, I should say, Ephesians chapter 1 Ephesians chapter 1 and while you're going to Ephesians 1 I'm going to quote you 1st Peter chapter 2 verse 24 our springboard verse for the last few lessons and into the next couple at least it says in, in Peter's writing there by inspiration of the Holy Spirit it says who himself talking about Jesus who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died to sins, might live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we were healed. Now we've already gone over all the points in that verse in detail, bringing out other scriptures there, but we're really focused right now on living unto righteousness, because that's who we are in Christ right now. That is the new creation recreated in Christ that he is referring to and talking about right there. And of course, uh, that is a totally different picture uh, and a totally different person than what you used to be according to the old man. The old man died, all the old things passed away with him, were buried when Jesus was buried. But when Jesus was raised from the dead, we were raised up with him and we are to walk and live in newness of life. We're to live under righteousness. So if we're supposed to be living under righteousness, which is directly connected to you walking in this reality and benefit of healing, receiving healing in your body, walking in divine health. If, if these are two directly connected things as we're gonna look at over the next couple of lessons and we're gonna show you in scripture that they are. But if we're, to, we're supposed to be living under righteousness, what does that look like? Uh, you know, what, what is the picture that we're supposed to be seeing of righteousness? Well, righteousness is everything it's a really an all-inclusive word is everything we have in the new creation is every benefit every blessing is all that we are and everything that we have and everything that God's given us and already deposited in our spirit if you were with us yesterday or in the last lesson that is already in our spirit that is all included in that term or that concept that picture of righteousness and really Ephesians really paints out a good picture of the things that righteousness includes for all of us. That's why we're spending some time in the book of Ephesians, particularly in this prayer right here that Paul prayed. Because really the problem now with the born again believer is not that we aren't and that we're trying to get God to uh, do something for us or give us something he hasn't already done or given. Really the issue now with the born again believer has to do with your soul how you're seeing things. God is already, and I'll get this back out again. Remember our spirit, soul, body pipeline right here. Everything that, everything that God wanted to do, he did in the spirit. He's already deposited everything in us. He's already done all this. We're righteous in our spirit. We're a born again believer. We have his life and nature. We have the life of God on the inside of us in our spirit. And everything that you'll ever need, God has already deposited in your spirit as we looked at in the last lesson, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. But the problem is in the soul. See, we want to get it from the spirit out here. So it has to pass through this soul. And I like the valve here because this valve is basically going to be, of your soul is going to be open or closed to the degree to which you come to know and understand what God has already done here. See, if you're living out here, if you're determining reality according to your physical senses, according to your body, then you're, all, you're going to keep that, you're going to keep this thing all locked up. Let me see if I can do this. You're going to keep that valve closed. We don't want that valve closed. We, we don't want it closed off from what God's already put in here. We want that thing opened. That means we're going to have to have our minds renewed. In order to have a mind renewed, though, you're going to have to tap into revelation knowledge. Because it's not just apparent out here in the world. It's not just in the natural sense realm or in the intellect. No, you have to find out who you are and what you have in the Word by under, under inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wrote this, and He also understands it and can paint that same picture 
that we see here in the Word inside of you, in your soul, so that you see things the way God sees them from His perspective. And that's really what this prayer of Ephesians is all about. Just seeing things from God's point of view, seeing things from His perspective, and that is living unto righteousness. So we're just going to read through this a little bit, uh, down to a portion, and then bring some more commentary in. Verse 17, it says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So that's where it all starts, having a revelation of Jesus himself, of his finished work, all that he did in his death, burial, and resurrection. That's what we're doing right here. Verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Notice that we're supposed to know this. We're supposed to know these things. So that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set it at, set him at his own seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Now notice right here that God in, inserted into or released into Jesus when he raised him from the dead. That you know actually Paul's trying to find human language words in order to convey these spiritual realities. See, he saw these things. He saw this by revelation. He's trying to convey this in human language. And it is just not there. And I tell you, you have to go to different translations to read different words, and you start getting a little picture. But the really, you need that spirit of wisdom and revelation working on the inside of you. You know what? What you can't get from the outside in just through human language. The the Holy Spirit can cause that revelation to come alive in your own heart and your own spirit. So, the Amplified reads it this way: It describes this power as immeasurable unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power that's working in and for us who believe. Now see that power was released in Jesus but it actually was directed toward us. We're the ones that needed that power and see for God to get it to us he had to put it in Christ because that's where we are also. Now this is resurrection power right here. This is the power that overcame all the forces of darkness. This is the power that raised Jesus from the dead after becoming sin on the cross for us and dying for us on our behalf and being buried for three days. And see, that's the kind of power that's already in us, but not just lying dormant there till we get to heaven. It's working for us, in and for us who believe. Now, let's look over to... Uh, Ephesians 3 real quickly. Ephesians 3. I call this, this is another prayer that Paul prays uh, for the church at Ephesus. This is kind of the other end of the bookend, so to speak, uh, of these prayers that he's, he's praying for them. And these are our prayers as well. Things that we need to understand and know. Now he covers some different things here, and I don't have time to go into all of it, but let's begin reading with verse number 14. It reads this way. Ephesians 3.14, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And notice he's referring to him as the Father. Yes, he's God. He is all-powerful, almighty. He is the Most High, but he's, he's our Father. He's the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, but he's also our Father. Jesus is the firstborn from the dead. Verse 15, it says, For whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named. Notice that right there. The whole family... On heaven, in heaven and on earth. See, we, we all lost loved ones. They're in heaven right now. But see, we're, we're all part of the same family. We don't have to wait till we die to, to go to heaven in order to become part of this family and call God our Father. No, the moment you make Jesus the Lord of your life, you are born of God. He becomes your spiritual father. You have his spiritual DNA on the inside of, him, of you, in your spirit, and you're part of this family that he's talking about. And we're all named by the same name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're under his identity. I tell you, that's powerful. There's a lot of things right there. But notice in verse 16, it says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Now there's that term again. We just ran across that in Ephesians chapter 1. I think this is, that phrase actually 
appears about four times in the New Testament. And we've already, we're, we're seeing two of them right here already. It says, according to the riches of his glory. In other words, God's not trying to get it down here. He's not trying to muster up enough resources down here in this natural realm or in our physical body or in our own being or makeup. Notice it's according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Notice that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Notice that we would be strengthened according to those riches and glory that we would be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Now notice that we are receiving strength according to the riches of his glory and according to that might. Now what is the might that he's talking about? Well, that goes back over to Ephesians 1 that we just read. It's according to that might, that power that God deposited in Christ and in us when he raised us with Jesus from the dead. And he put that same divine power, that glorious power on the inside of us. The book of Colossians chapter 1, you don't have to go over there, but Colossians 1 verse 11 says that we're strengthened with all might. I like that right there. That we're strengthened with all might. In other words, God didn't withhold. He didn't hold anything back. Boy, he just put immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing greatness of that resurrection life and power in Christ and in us when he raised us up from the dead as a new creation. He put that on the inside of us in our born-again spirit. And notice that we are strengthened according to that right there. We are strengthened according to that. Yes, we, we do suffer weakness in our soul, weakness in our emotions, weakness in our minds. We have limitations in our mind and our mental capacity, and we, we have weaknesses in our physical body. In fact, if you, if you really look at the word sickness, many times in the New Testament, particularly in the four Gospels, the word sickness is actually translated infirmity. That word infirmity actually means weaknesses. Weakness or weaknesses. I want you to see that right there, that sickness and disease is referred to as a weakness in the body. See, we can suffer a lot of kind of weaknesses in this natural life. Again, sickness and disease in the physical body, in the mind. We can become weary in our own minds and our souls, become discouraged and fearful, despondent about things. And we can suffer even weakness in our, our material provision, our material wealth. And see, that's when we come up with uh, more need than we do supply in this natural realm. Well, see, God is strengthening us. There is some strengthening coming to us from God himself that's more than enough to carry out and overcome those weaknesses that we have in this natural life. See, we are being strengthened. We're receiving strength from within according to his glorious power, according to the riches of his glory, according to that same immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing greatness of his power. It's working in and for us who believe. Well, where is that strength? Well, again, let's refer to this. He's put it in here. All might has been put in here. That divine power has been put in here. That, that resurrection power and life has been put inside of here. But see, what we want to do is get it out here. Well, see, if you're thinking weak all the time, you know, I just, I'm just so weak and, you know, I just feel so weak. If you're, if you're, and I'm weary and I'm tired and you're, you're talking and thinking that way all the time, you're not really in line with this. What you're doing is you are, you are cutting the valve off. You're not being straight. The strength is not getting through because you're thinking, talking and acting in a way that's different than what the Word says is already in you. No, the book of Joel says that let the weak say, I am strong. In fact, uh, over in Ephesians chapter 6, it says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. He didn't say, all right, you go out there and try to be strong and muster up some strength and hopefully you'll just somehow make it over into heaven. No, God never intended for us to live that way. God intended for us to draw out the resources that he has already deposited in our spirit. And see, if you've got a weakness in your, in your physical body, a sickness, disease, and infirmity, a weakness there, 
there's more than enough strength and power on the inside of you to overcome that weakness in your flesh. I like to say there's so much strength and power on the inside of us when we release it to our physical bodies by believing, thinking, talking, acting in faith according to what's on the inside of us God's put there, then it just swallows up all that weakness. It just swallows it up and overcomes it so that we don't have that weakness anymore. See, with that in mind, let's go over to um, Philippians chapter 4. Now, I know a couple of these verses we're about to read in Philippians 4 are going to be familiar to us here. But they're going to come alive to us even more now as we look at them. Uh, so in Ephesians chapter 4, and um, let me get over here real quick. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 13. In the New King James, it reads this way. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, remember we were talking about prepositions earlier. Those prepositions are so important to our understanding, our identification in Christ. And we said that the word uh, for is substitution. Substitution always gives way to identification. That's why we see with. You know, we, see the, we saw those scriptures that say that with him, together with him, that means everything he did for us, we did with him. And then we see that real big phrase, in Christ, in him, in whom, or something similar. There's over 130 of those in the New Testament. Now, why is that important? Because that denotes union. But here's another one right here, through. The word through involves application. In other words, what God did for us, what Jesus did for us, we did with him because we were in union with him. And based on that reality of our union and our identification with Christ, now we have an application of this. Because we're in union with Christ, we have the same power and the same strength that he has that was exerted in Jesus when, he raised, when God raised him from the dead is in our spirits already. But notice that we can do all things through Christ, application, who strengthens us. Now, I like the amplified version of this in verse 13. It reads this way. Paul's talking. He says, I have strength for all things in Christ, who empowers me. It says in the amplified, I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him, who infuses inner strength into me. Notice, through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Notice that right there. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I tell you, that's powerful. That really brings out, really, I think, the Greek wording on that because they have some tenses that we don't really have in the English that this is a continual thing. God, Christ is continually flowing his power, flowing his strength, strengthening us in our inner man according to those riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And notice he's saying, based on that reality and the application of that reality of my identification in Christ, what I have in my, my spirit, he said, I have strength for all things in him who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him. Now, when Paul wrote this, according to all accounts, he was in prison, and not just the prisons we know today primarily. This was a dungeon. He was almost knee-deep in sewage in this dungeon, and yet he's writing, writing this epistle right here. And notice right here, he's saying, I have strength for anything. This is the attitude that Paul had. This is the attitude he had because he had a revelation of what was in his spirit. He had a revelation of what God had already put on the inside of him. And he already knew by revelation there was more than enough power and more than enough strength to put him over in this situation and in every situation. Rather than talking weakness, rather than talking tiredness and defeat, and I'm just, you know, I've, I've had enough, I'm out of here. Notice right here, he said, I got strength for all things in Christ. Who empowers me? I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses his inner strength into me continuously. 
See, no matter, this is what's going to keep you from being discouraged, despondent, fearful. Even though you have pain and tiredness and weakness in your physical body, that body is not the real you. The real you is the spirit, and the real and the real part of you is constantly and being fused with that strength and power from on high, from Jesus, from our identification in Him. And see, as we begin to see things, just like Paul did, as we begin to see things from God's perspective, see things in reality, what God's already put inside of us, then we're going to look at things differently. If we get a bad report from the doctor, we're not going to sit there and rebuke the doctor and go into a place of denial about these things. No, what we are actually doing is seeing from a different perspective. No matter what weakness I have, no matter what infirmity may be attached to my physical body, I've got something on the inside that's greater than that. I've got a power and a strength on the inside of me that'll just swallow that thing up and change it and make me whole from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. See, I tell you, that's, that, that is just so strong right there. We're here in Philippians 4. Look at verse number 19. Now, I know verse 19 in Word of Faith circles and others, we quote that, and, and, and it's true. This is in context, context of material provision, you know, of your material provision and what you need externally in this life. But actually, he's bringing this over and, and broadening this out even beyond that. So notice in Philippians 4.19, he said, and my God, notice he said, my God, you know, he's personalized because God has done this for him. He could say this personally by testimony. And my God shall supply all your need. See, not just the, the, all your need would be an all inclusive word, wouldn't it? In other words, any need and every need that you would have, all your needs, not just materially, not just clothes and food. All those things are important. All those are needs. But he's broadening this out right here. He says, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hey, there's that phrase again. We ran it across it twice in the book of Ephesians. Here it is in the book of, of uh, Philippians. Do you think this is a, something that Paul got a hold of? Yes. See, according to his perspective, he, he's already seen this. According to God's riches and glory by Christ Jesus, there's more supply than there is need. This is the perspective that Jesus not only walked in, but ministered out of and demonstrated. See, when he, he was out there in the wilderness with all those thousands of people out there, and he was going to give them all something to eat, all they had was a little boy's lunch. That's not enough to go around, folks. I can tell you, not enough to go around by any stretch of the imagination. So the Bible says that he took that, began to give thanks for it, and he looked up. He wasn't just doing something religious right there. When it, when it says he looked up, that word in the Greek is anablepo. It means to look again. In other words, what, what he saw in the natural was insufficiency, not enough. So he looked again and he saw into the spiritual realm according to the riches of God's glory. And he saw more than enough. He saw abundance there. See, this is what's really going to put you over in receiving healing. There's more healing power and anointing on the inside of you than what you have weakness and need in, uh, in, your in your physical body. Even if you need a miracle, something is just not functional anymore, something has maybe been taken out not there anymore, or is just whatever. God has miracle work. This is miracle working power. This is, there's more supply than there is need. See, that's what we were referring to in the last lesson in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 that God has already deposited in us by his divine power everything that you'll ever have need of in this life. God's already anticipated every need. He knew what was you were going to need in life. He knew how much it was going to require in order to make you whole in your life. And listen, he didn't just give you enough. He gave you more than enough. See, this is the life of God that we're talking about. This is the abundant life that Jesus was referring to in John 10.10. When he says the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and to destroy, he said, but I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. The Amplified says, have it to the full until it overflows. David said it this way in Psalm 23, we're all familiar with. He said, my cup runs over. Yeah, God knows how much it would, it would take to just fill it up to the brim and that's it, not overflow it. But God did it on purpose. He wants you to know there's more supply than there is need. There's more strength then there is weakness in your life. There's more power 
than there is what's coming against you in life. And it's all on the inside of us. So what we're doing is renewing our mind. When we, we begin to believe this way, think this way, talk this way, act this way in faith, it opens that valve up and releases what's in our spirit to our physical bodies, to our natural life in order to make it whole. And you don't, you don't have to tell it what to do. It's intelligent, I can tell you. You know, it will gravitate at right to your point of need. It will be attracted to your weakness, to your point of need, in order to swallow up and change that weakness into the strength of Almighty God. I tell you, that, that's shouting ground right there. That is big time stuff right there. We start talking about this, this is reality. This is what's on the inside of us already. That's why, again, Ephesians chapter 6 says, you be strong, be strong. In other words, don't try to get it up. Don't try to muster it up. You be strong. In other words, you, are all, you already have the strength on the inside of you. Now just be that. Be strong in the Lord, in the Lord, in your identification with Jesus, and in the power, in the power of his might. See, we're strong, we're strengthened according to all might, according to that power that God has put on the inside of us. This working in and for us who believe. This is what put Paul over. This was the way he saw things. And the, listen, this is what's going to put you over as well. When you begin to look at that, even when you're suffering pain, we're not in a place of denial. We don't deny that it's there. What we are doing is acknowledging there's something greater on the inside of me. There's some strength. There's some power. There's some anointing on the inside of me that's bigger and stronger and greater than what's on the outside. And see, when you start seeing things from that perspective, rather than having fear, rather than being discouraged, rather than being anxious and stressed out about it, I tell you, you're gonna have, you're gonna start rejoicing just like Paul did. See, he wrote on in that book of Philippians, that epistle of Philippians we were just referring to, he used the word joy, joyful, rejoicing, or something along that line 16 times in that short four chapter epistle that many people call that the epistle of joy and he wrote that while he was in that dungeon that we talked about see the bible says in nehemiah 8 10 be uh that the joy of the lord is our strength when you start believing this to the point of being joyful about it rejoicing that's when the strength is released and goes into manifest in our life it's a good place to stop. We're going to pick up in this up again tomorrow in the next lesson. If you'd like additional materials or resources, visit us on the web, TonyCowan.org. We'll see you in the next lesson. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. We hope that it really blessed you. Hope you got a lot out of it. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you also turn on the notifications so that you get notified whenever we post a new video. Also, go ahead and hit that like button. And if God's doing awesome things in your life like we're believing Him for, then we would love for you to share that with us. So leave us a comment. Let us know all the good things God's doing in your life. We'll see you next time.